the junior doctors an average uplift of 22.3 percent so that means that the junior doctors who were on strike for the past 20 months they were holding out for a pay restoration of somewhere in the region of about 35 percent they've been talking to the government the the new government for the last couple of weeks remember where streeting the incoming health secretary said he had made it a top priority to get around that table to talk to the bma the union representing the junior doctors and find a way of resolving this this dispute and it seems that they have done exactly that so that 22.3 percent that will be that backdated for the past 20 months junior doctors will see an immediate benefit in their pay packets at the end of this month so that means the BMA will go back to its members and say, do we accept this offer? And it's widely thought that they will accept this offer, which will mean that those 20 months of agonizing strikes, which have crippled the health service, not just in, in terms of the cost to patients who have had at their appointments and operations and procedures delayed after delay after delay, but what it means when the government faces its critics who will say that where are you suddenly going to find all of this extra money to pay for the junior doctors they will be able to say that we will save billions in pounds that's what it's cost the nhs it's cost them billions of pounds to cover the junior doctors while they've been out on strike tens of thousands of appointments have been added to that record waiting list now when labor came in um, when they won the election they said immediately that they were going to create 40,000 extra appointments a week. To do that with the existing staff, um, with the existing staff they have, so these weren't extra staff they were going to bring in to create these extra appointments. This was just with the existing workforce. To do that, to, to try and make these extra appointments, 40,000 a week, they would need the junior doctors to stop their industrial action. Every time there's a strike called, Tens of thousands of appointments are delayed. And we don't really know the true number of patients who have had delays to their appointments because we got into a cycle where the hospitals, the, the trusts we were talking to, were saying we're now so used to operating under these circumstances, we just don't make appointments anymore. So they weren't cancelling appointments, they weren't giving appointments to patients who were still waiting. So the real cost, uh, the real the number of patients who are waiting for procedures could be much, much higher than the figure that we think, uh, it, that the figure that exists at the moment. So this is a huge development. We will hear more from the BMA this afternoon after the Chancellor makes her statement after three o'clock, we'll find out exactly what those figures are. The BMA, the, the union representing the junior doctors, are not saying anything officially until after the, the Chancellor makes her announcements to Parliament later this afternoon. But we understand, and, and this has been confirmed by government, that that pay uh, uplift will be 22.3%. So it falls some, falls some way short of that 35% that the junior doctor's been holding out for, but it's certainly an increase on the 8% that was imposed on them by the last government over uh, last year. So it'll be, it'll be in stages, that 8% that was imposed on them, plus another 4%, and then later they'll see the, the figure brought up to that 22.3%. Tens of thousands of appointments have been um, added every time these doctors go on strike. It's costing the NHS billions of pounds. So all of that, hopefully, will begin to ease, and that will take some pressure off the NHS. The government will hopefully be able to forge ahead with this um, big task it has.